Get ready to have 25 years in 10 minutes, so here we go. It's 1998, it's the summer, and Steve and I are very young college students studying at UTEP. Um, I had just changed my major to special education after working with a really um, incredible young woman. I became a nanny earlier that year for, uh, her name was Heather, and she had special needs, and so that changed my life into special education, and Steve, had just come back to El Paso to live with his family, be with his grandmother, and was pursuing art. Yeah, and I found out at an early age I had dyslexia. So art for me was the thing in my classroom that I was known for. I was the guy that would do the United States map. I was the guy that could draw Abraham Lincoln with a beautiful beard. And that was my thing. And from that point on, I decided art was going to be the way that I was going to go forward. So um, in the summer of 1998, I was taking Steve to his job, as I always did. And we get to the parking lot. Um, and mind you, he was a telemarketer. He, Horrible job. <laughs> <laughs> we are stuck in this parking lot. He literally can't get out of the car. And I'm looking at him like, what's, what's the problem? And, and he says, I, I cannot do another day of this. And I said, are you sure? And he said, I hey, cannot get out of the car. I will not go back in that place. And this is not where I'm supposed to be. So his career of selling phone bundles ended that day. So we, <laughs> we ended up driving to, so we said, okay, let's go. We drove off, we went to lunch, and we landed ourselves at Chili's because it was the 90s, so don't judge. The skillet gesso, you know. The margaritas with the cactus stem glasses. That's where it was at. So we went to lunch, and we were talking about just the week before, I was doing my special education blocks as a, a special ed intern uh, with my kids at Little Children's Elementary in Canutio. And so Steve had brought some leftover paint and canvas and worked with my kids that day. And we were just talking about what a great time that was and how we should maybe try to do this for more kids because we just saw so much spark and joy. And so that's when Steve began to sketch a dream on a napkin. So while we were there, I asked the waitress, can I borrow a pen? And she gave me a black pen. And I took a napkin and I started sketching a small drawing of this kid kicking up his heels, having a blast. And on one side, you have a C, right? That's creative. The K is the body. And the other C is the camp. Because at that time, we envisioned it would be a summer camp. Not knowing at the end of that date or having lunch, Drea pulled it over and she wrote in the corner, if you look down there, it says June 98. She goes, I'm keeping it. And I go, all right. Sounds good. And so that's when the world opens up for us. And it was amazing. That time we spent with the kids, I could feel the energy. I could see the kids learning. I could see the kids asking things that they haven't said before. Now, most of the kids we were working with were special needs. And one girl who had never said a word asked for the color red. While we were there painting, I could see kids stopping in the doorway, and then suddenly I saw the principal and vice principal stopped in the doorway. And they said, uh, excuse me, sir, the problem is the other kids are not going to their classrooms because they're hanging out here. And I said, I'm sorry, <laughs> I didn't know that's a problem. And she stayed. The principal was there for a while, and then she called me over again, and she says, if you come back tomorrow, I have $400 in a side budget. We would love for you to come back. And being college students, we both said, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> and we did, right? So a little time goes on, and it turns out that somebody in the front office, I still don't know who it is, we don't know who it is, had called the El Paso Times. And this reporter shows up talking about two college students that are utilizing art and working with kids and wanted to start a program. Um, and it was pretty much amazing to have this come out in the paper. Um, we can also talk about how I used to cut my hair back then, that bowl haircut. Yeah, we can see some of that. <laughs> That's another talk. It was cheap. And so that uh, newspaper article led to our first shot. So a our woman, first big shot. Big shot. Uh, a woman named Lynn Jacobson, she was in charge of marketing at Providence Hospital back uh, in 1999. Um, and so she called us up and said, would you like to come and do this for a week with pediatric oncology patients? And we immediately just jumped at the chance. We said, of course. Absolutely. We're there. And she said, great, we'll come to your office and we'll talk it out. And then we 
immediately panicked because our office at that time was a fax machine in my bedroom at my parents' house. We used to call the kids still living at home. They're like, no, 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 don't come to us, we'll go to you. So we met with her <laughs> and talked all the details out and we began our one week little pilot that you'll see here doing self portraits. Every famous artist does a self portrait. And I think it's the most empowering thing to see yourself and you made something. So that first time we went in, we went around, got all the kids. I brought them in, set up the easels and the canvas inside. And during that time that we were painting, just those three hours, I saw the parents, I saw the nurses, the doctors. Everybody was pressed against the glass. It kind of was like the zoo. They were watching us. And I just felt so good. And the kids, after they left, their parents were crying. The kids were feeling great. And I knew that we were doing something right. And it basically changed our life from that point on. So that program, I think, is well, a testament. Well, the, the program ends. It was a five-day, just the pilot. And um, Lynn Jacobson is outside, and we're thanking everyone. The doctors, and you know, thanks for the great week. We were super excited uh, to be there. And so Lynn tells us, um, well, we'd like for you to go ahead and work for the hospital. And Steve says, no. And then I left. Oh, there he went. And he says, no, no, no. I and say no a lot. <laughs> And uh, she said, why, why were you saying no? And she was really confused. I was confused. Like, this is it? What are you talking about? And he said, no, because uh, we're going to go ahead and start our own nonprofit. And so we did. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what we ended up doing was we decided, like, we're all in, because we were, this, was our, this was our calling, our, our, our also, purpose. Also, I should mention, when you work in that environment with these kids, it changes your life. You see life differently. You see what you're supposed to do differently. And I had that click along with those kids, and Drea felt it too. So we always attribute our, our, our passion and our success to the three Ps, uh, passion, persistence, and perseverance. And we really think that's what got us going. So what we did when we decided, OK, we're going to make this a full-time deal. Remember, it was the 90s, so there was no Google. There was no internet. We would go to a place called the library and do research. And, uh, and we figured, yellow book. And we, the yellow pages was our jam. We loved to cold call people. And people tell us, no, you're crazy. But that fueled us. And so we, at that time, we couldn't afford an attorney to help get us a 501. So that's how we ended up just doing all our research. And May 1999, this is the official letter from the IRS, granting us that uh, official 501 tax exempt. And we read that all the way through, page by page, filling out everything that was needed in order to get ourselves going. And so the same time, May 1999, that's when I graduated from UTEP. And it was like a sliding doors moment because I was getting all these job offers for special education jobs. And it was one of those pivotal moments, like, do we do it? Do we not? And so we decided, I won't take that job. We're all in on this. Steve took two years off from I left UTEP. UTEP for two years so that I could just work with the kids and perfect the relationships that were needed in the community, as well as refine being a good teacher and a, and a mentor. And so there we are. And I, we just had to throw this in. A couple months ago, of all places, a airport in Mexico, we ran into Lynn Jacobson, who gave us our first shot. We hadn't seen her in 20 years, and it just like blew us away, and so it was really great to give her a quick 20 years of what's happened <laughs> at the airport. So one week turns in to 25 years. Our very first program we start ends up being at Providence, Project AIM Arts in Motion. And so we began working with the pediatric oncology patients. And here you see Miguel. He's one of our very, very special, always in our hearts. Uh, one of the first paintings we did as an actual 501 was this bull that's on silk. And at the time, I, I forgot to bring my material, so I had silk in the back of my car. Don't ask me why. <laughs> and I took a stapler uh, that they had at the nurse's station, stretched it over an open frame, and I said, we're ready to go. And I was always talking to him about Picasso and what the symbol of a bull was to Picasso was strength. And he said, I am a bull. I want to make one. I said, OK, let's make one. And so um, unfortunately, he wasn't going to make his battle with leukemia. And so his parents called us and said, can you please come and you know, talk with him and say your goodbye? So we did. And that is when he expressed about how he would love to, in the hospital if he had computers, because he really wanted to do graphics and, and design. And so we looked at him and we said, we, we promise you this. And so when he passed, um, 
we kept our promise and we, like we do, we cold call people, we cold called the Disney company, told them yeah. our story. I mean, whether you say no, that's all we got. So, um, and they funded a full blown computer lab at the hospital for us in Miguel's honor and memory. And what that did is it changed the game. The kids wanted to come out of the rooms, the parents were now our allies, and we were making a difference with kids that were going through a horrible time. But those little breaks of spending time with us, I think made a difference, and we would show up and they would be outside the door waiting for us. So we knew it was working. So before we said YOLO to the OLO, I said yes to the dress, and we got married in 2000. And this is our first real this building. was our first studio on, on Montana. It's the old arts photographic. And we painted the windows. This is actually a sketch from Ivan Calderon, and he drew it. And at that time, we were starting to get more programming happening. We were looking around, trying to figure out where we could find a building. So we would drive around in my little black Ford Ranger looking for areas, and we came across this building next to the train station in the bus depot in Union Plaza. When we found it, I snuck through the gate, it was locked, went inside the building, it was in shambles. So we decided to not only raise money, but buy the building, and it took over a million dollars of an investment. Here it is now, downtown, and it's been rehabbed, and it contains a gallery to showcase the kids' work. It's 16,000 square feet, it has a education or teaching kitchen, it has the ability to not only teach art, make art, but show our kids talent, and it gave us a home for all the programs that we had started, like the hospital, working in housing authorities, working with kids in schools, working with everybody, basically. And it became something I think is a lasting mark for El Paso, but it's also a beautiful uh, space for us to show our kids. So, so then we get to 2014, and never in our wildest dreams would we imagine that we would receive the nation's highest honor for an out-of-school time program by the President's Committee on the Arts and Humanities. And so we were awarded this for a project aim at a hospital program, and we were able to bring two of our patients that were in remission at the time to help us receive the award. We got to bring their families. Uh, they whined and dined us, not the kids. All week, super fun. We had the best time. Got to meet super famous celebrities. He got. Uh, I got to meet Chuck Close. I know you know who that is, Chuck, because she was there too, <laughs> and her mom. And it was amazing to see not only the idols that we were there, but just being present in this experience. It was amazing for the kids and the family. That was Miranda too. at the time that you'd see. She's the one uh, with the the first lady, and then Danasia, you think we're nervous. I don't know how she pulled this off. She's a smart kid. A speech and with the first lady in front of her. And so these kids are happy, healthy, they're in college now, we still keep in touch with them. But we also have to point out in this picture, after years and years of trying to have our own creative kid, in that picture, I'm finally pregnant with our own Avelina, who's here tonight, today. Like Shout tonight. out, Avi. Uh, so while we were doing this practice speech all week, she's listening, and then she said, um, I have some feedback, and I was like, oh yes, eight-year-old, give us your feedback, <laughs> and she said, you're missing a really important part of the story, and I said, what is that, and she said, it's me, so <laughs> that's for you. There you go. <laughs> um, and here we are now. So after all the time that we spent, we realized that in our community, we wanted to showcase our kids' talent and make a mark, not just doing the programming, but doing something that we can beautify the space, show the talent of our kids. So we brought a lot of partners together over the years, like Sun Metro doing their bus stops, the pedestrian pathway with MCAD and uh, the arts department. And all these works were not only teaching about leadership and teaching about teamwork and technique, but it was showing everybody in El Paso that we have talent and we have kids that have that. Also the stadium, this was for the water utility. It's a sundial that, that works by Austin Pond. But every time we would do this, I could see the kids were starting to get this self-esteem and the feeling of being a rock star. That one's on the Carolina Bridge, and that one was in Texas Highway. But now, the one that's coming up that we're excited about is in La Nube. La Nube, we are doing Desert Guardians uh, or Alebrijes. They're made out of aluminum steel, 
and we're in the midst of creating and fine-tuning what that installation will be. And so in 2019, um, as we all were here on August 3rd, our, our community was rocked by a horrific senseless act uh, with the Walmart shooting. And so we got into action very quickly and started working with the United Family Resiliency Center to start working with those families directly affected. And so we had a plan, we had a program, and just as we were about to launch it, a global pandemic hits. And that was scary. So like all of us, we're trying to figure out our lives, our kids, our work, and so we wanted to make sure our kids were never disrupted even more. So we got to work quickly and started making videos out of our house every week through YouTube. So we were taking step-by-step -step instruction, and myself and the team were devising all these lesson plans. Then the materials were dropped at their front door. The kids would open their door, grab their material, and start working. We posted them on YouTube, and then I would do Zoom calls with everybody, and we'd talk. And we figured out we were developing a relationship, not only with these kids that would log on every week, but their parents could see what we were giving to the kids. So. And so with that, we came up, we thought, okay, here's our chance because we were hitting a mass community all at once. And so our new idea now is a platform that we are putting all of our curriculum, our step-by-step -step tutorial, and it's for everybody and anybody nationwide, globally, that can access our, our platform. And so that is what we think, because now we've touched 20,000 plus lives, and we feel like with this, this is our next big chapter, and so we want everyone to stay tuned. And with that, we are almost out of time. They're going to cue the music like the Oscars. we got to go. This is... That is our next big mountain. We're launching this platform. We're going to make a difference for teachers, education, the kids that have talent, and the kids like me that can showcase it. So we wanted to thank you. And for those of you wondering, um, after working and being married for 25 years, we are still married. So <laughs> that's a whole other tech talk. Um, but we did want to let you guys know that we have something for you as you leave. We made napkins um, of the famous bowl that Miguel did on cocktail napkins and your own napkins for you to sketch your next idea. Thank you, guys. So thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>